Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another A Sure Foundation topic on the book from Brother James, A Sure Foundation, What Everyone Should Know About the God of the Holy Bible. And today's topic is titled God's Creation. So let me flip this around and we will get started on this topic. All right, one second. All right, welcome everyone. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And again, this is another topic study, topical study from the Sure Foundation book. And this is from Brother James Knox. Uh, he is uh, my pastor, and he pastors the Bible Baptist Church here in Deland, Florida. And you can find this book and many others on the church website at www.jameswknox.org. So, if you have the newest edition of the Sure Foundation book, the page number will be 122. If you have an older version, it might be on a different page, but this is the sixth printing, and you might have the seventh printing, which was uh, done in 2018, I believe, or 2017, and I have the sixth printing, which is 2004. So, it'll be on 122 of that book if you have that particular copy of the book all right so god's creation and we are halfway through the book right in the middle so let's get started on the topic of god's creation and it says here as brother james starts out as he writes here he says uh we go through the verse in psalms 14 1 where it says the fool has said in his heart there is no god psalms 14 1 there is no one else who takes that position everyone but a fool knows and believes that there is a god right however not all men know god as a result of this the bible says that men have done some terrible things in romans 1 21 to 25 the bible says because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. And so, yeah, many people out there uh, worshiping and serving the creature more than the Creator, and that Creator who is blessed forever. So, Brother James says, the Word of God declares all men started out with a knowledge of God. Right, that is the truth right there. Everyone, even you watching, has uh, started out with the knowledge of God. Everyone begins his life with a faith in God. There is not a human born who lacks belief in Almighty God. Someone may have talked them out of it. So has somebody talked you out of it? Someone may have sh uh, shamed them away from, the tr from that truth. Someone may have educated them into error, but men begin with a God consciousness. That's right. This knowledge surely may lack development, but everyone comes into the world with a certain awareness that they had a creator to whom they are accountable. Now the Bible says there are some strange things that happen along the road of life. In Matthew 7.13, Jesus Christ the Lord said, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in uh, thereat. On this broad road there are those who di did not glorify God, and were not thankful to Him for the life that He had given them. Yes, your life comes from God, but you become unthankful and uh, did not glorify God. As a result, they became vain in their imaginations. <laughs> right. Uh, this led them to change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. This image may have been made like unto a man, 
or a bird, or a four-footed beast, or a creeping thing. Civilized men look with scorn upon those they label heathen, and wonder how they could confide in a totem or idol made of wood or stone. Then, these same people will attend a church where there are images and idols. Right. <laughs> Some enlightened people have little statues in their home or on their lawn depicting some saint or virgin. Others worship in a sanctuary where there is an image or an idol. The Bible says clearly that the reason they have turned to that idol is because they have they had first turned away from God. And we read in Romans 1.24, Wherefore God also gave them up. No one begins life as a pagan or a worshiper of images. Men first give up on God and turn to idolatry. That is the truth. In return, God gives up on them. My friend, that is a terrible thought. Oh, oh yeah, the day that God gives up on you, that's a terrible thought right there. So you don't want God to give up on you, so don't give up on God and turn to idolatry. Because if you do so, God will eventually give up on you. So my friend, that is a terrible thought. You know that an image or idol cannot save anyone. Right. You know it is but wood and stone. A man made it with his own hands. You bought it and you paid for it. And then Brother James says, I wouldn't have a God that I could buy. Right, neither would I. I wouldn't have a God that I could pay for. My God is the maker of the heavens and the earth, and he owns it all. I guarantee you, he is not wood or stone. Amen. <clears throat> Some of you will justify idolatry because you have loved ones or because you have loved ones or family members who attend churches that are called Christian, yet are filled with images and idols. Dear friend, you would never help uh, your kinfolk by sanctioning their sins against God. Idolatry is an abomination to the Lord, especially if the idols bear his name or the name of, of persons found in his holy Bible. <clears throat> this is not all. Some men, in fact it is sad to say, many men who are not involved in the worship of idols and images have changed the truth of God into a lie. Romans 1.25 Jesus Christ said in John 17.17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is the truth. Amen. There are those who say that the Bible is a lie. <laughs> it's not. It's the truth. Who say that the scriptures are not true who say that there are things in the word of God that cannot be believed. These infidels peep and mutter about errors and mistakes in the Bible. All such persons have changed the truth of God into a lie. Romans 1.26 says of these men, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. If you give up on God, the Bible says that God will give up on you. Then where will you be? Yeah, where will you be then? It is God's heaven. His throne is there. It is God's life. God alone has everlasting life. If God gives up on you, my friend, you will be without heaven. You will be without eternal life. And mo mostly you will be without Jesus. Then there is a third group. The Bible says these people don't necessarily worship images or idols and they have not necessarily changed the truth of God into a lie, but this group worships and serves the creature more than the Creator. You are a created being. You are a creature of God. Do you live for yourself and not for God? Do you live by your own opinions, your own rules, your own standards, and not those which God has given you? Hmm. Do you make your own way in life without considering God or without consulting God? Oh, yikes. <clears throat> is your life a life of self-determination or a life governed by the Lord? The Bible says God will abandon even these. It is a sad thing to have God give up on you. Yeah, that is a sad thing. God is long-suffering, amen. He is rich in love and mercy. 
No one is more long-suffering. No more is no one is more patient than God. So when you get to the place where God has given up on you, you are just as good as in hell with the door shut. Yikes. <laughs> Scary thought. The fact that you are reading these words tells me that there is still in the depths of your heart a belief in God. There is yet some concern about your relationship to Almighty God. You need to do something about it. Yes, do something about it right now. If idolatry has stood in your way, you need to forsake those images, confess them as sin, deny any relationship to them, and come to the true and living God, trusting Him alone for your soul's salvation. If you have been one of those deceived by the devil into saying that the Bible is not to be believed, you must repent of that sin. It is the oldest sin in the history of mankind. Satan told Eve in the garden that God had lied. She believed Satan. Do you know what she found out? God had not lied. She died. Adam found out God had not lied. Adam died. Oh, the devil will tell you until your dying day that God's word is not true. God says it is absolutely true. So don't listen to the devil. Believe the Lord. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. Joshua 24:15. I urge you to believe God's record of himself before he gives up on you. Right. Amen. So, do so right now. If you have served the creature, yourself, more than the creator, your God, you must deny yourself and come to God through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You have no other hope. You are not God, the devil is not God, inanimate objects and idols are not God. God is the great I Am. He ever lives. He is the beginning and the end. And I may rightly say, He is all things in between. He is the God. Do you know Him? Do you, friend? The remainder of this lesson will deal with God's creative work. It is a well-established fact that the Bible sets forth, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sets forth God as the creator of all things, visible and invisible. This is easily understood by all who believe the scriptures. Hebrews 11:3 says, "Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear." Having learned so much about God and His wonderful wisdom and power, it is only natural to accept that He created the world. We should expect this revelation to agree with the findings of true science, and it does. If there seems to be a disagreement, we should seek to remove the difficulty by recognizing and realizing that, number one, science many times simply has not yet gathered all the facts. And just as soon as science gathers all the facts about any matter, uh, matter, they always find themselves lining up with the Bible. Number two, our knowledge of the scriptures is incomplete. We purpose to uh, thus remove the difficulty which man seems to have in trusting God as creator, not at the expense of reason, but rather by appealing to reason. First of all, the Bible states that God created the worlds and all that is in them. Specifically, we are told that we are fashioned by God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis 1:1 1, 1 is known to be to, is known to almost anyone who has ever picked up a Bible. In fact, this verse is known to countless millions of people who have never read the Bible. In this great passage, the word of God says uh, Succinctly, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Notice the Bible does not begin with an argument. The Bible begins with a statement. The Bible does not begin with apologetics. The Bible begins with a declaration of absolute truth. Man can either take it or leave it. Do you see how this matches Hebrews 11.3? There is not nothing to understand. It is a matter of 
a matter of belief. Uh, it is a matter or belief. In the beginning, there was nothing there other than God. People say, where did God come from? No, no, no. The where came from God. Amen. There was nowhere to come from when everything came from God. To create is to make something out of nothing. God created the heaven and the earth. Now, from Hebrews 1, let us read the New Testament account of this matter. God, who at sundry times and divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Hebrews 1, 1 through 2. Who created the heaven and the earth? God did. How did God do it? By his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Son did the actual work of forming and framing the world. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Hebrews 1, 10-12 You see, before there were heavens and an earth, there was God. Even prior to his manifestation in human flesh, the Godhead was bodily in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. With his hands he actually formed the earth, and formed the heavens, and formed the foundations thereof. And when they are all gone, when the universe gives out, when the earth gives out, when this planet that you live on gives out, Jesus Christ will still be going strong. Hallelujah. People today are worried about famine, drought and starvation, persecution, executions, and governments out of control. They are worried about ecology and preserving the earth. They are worried about the planet being destroyed through nuclear weapons. Let me tell you something, my friend. If you know the true God and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior, and you have received Him, received from Him everlasting life, and have His sure and absolute promise that you will be with Him forever, you do not have to worry about these, this earth being destroyed. You do not have to worry about the heavens being destroyed. Surely they will be, but just as surely as the heavens and the earth shall be destroyed, God will not be destroyed. You will be safe with Him for all eternity. Amen. Instead of worrying about this earth, men need to worry about their souls. Right. So stop worrying about this earth and what's going to happen to this earth and start worrying about your soul. This is the important thing. In Colossians 1, we find even greater emphasis placed upon the creative work of God the Son. There we read, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him, and for him, and he before all things, and by him all things consist. Colossians 1, 13-17 There is the God of the Bible. He is your creator. It would not be stated more clearly, or it could not be stated more clearly. God is before all things, and by him all things consist. All things were created by him and for him. People say God has no right to tell them what to do, <laughs> what to believe, or how to live. <laughs> Wrong. So, God has every right to tell you how to, what to do, and, how to, and what to believe, and how to live. Friend, you would not even be here if God had not made you. Right. Your heart would not be pumping blood through your body to keep you alive if God did not cause it to happen. Everything you are everything you have, and everything you will be, 
is a direct result of God's work. Your body is made out of his dust and his water. You are breathing his air. You eat his food. The life that you have come, have, uh, the life that you have came from him. It is all his. You are his. He has the perfect absolute right. In fact, he is the only one that has any right to tell you what to do and how to live. You certainly don't have any right to tell yourself how to live. <laughs> yeah, right. God made you. Amen. In John 17, 5, Jesus says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had, made, uh, had with thee before the world was. Before the world was, the Father, the Word, capital W, and the Holy Ghost were present to create. Do you not see that their wisdom, knowledge, and might are, are superior to yours? Do you not see that? We are not told when God created the heavens and the earth, but we do know that in six days he brought them out into their present form and created the animal life that is now upon the earth. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 3-5, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now there should be no question about the length of time here. If words mean anything, these are literal 24-hour periods. We have day, that is the light, and we have night, that is the darkness. The day is said to be an evening and a morning. This is the first day, just exactly as men reckon days right now. The Bible is very clear. Just believe it as it stands. Don't damn your soul by trying to change the truth of God into a lie. Right. Just take God at his word and believe what he said. Amen. You know, it is a marvel to me that some of you believe that God is powerful enough to create the heavens and the earth, but you cannot believe that he could do it in six literal, literal days. If he is powerful enough to do it, why would it take him any length of time? Yeah. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let dry land appear, or, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and god saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day genesis 1 6 13 where did the plant life come from where did the vegetation come from where did the fruits and trees and vegetables come from God made them on the third day. Now we come to the fourth day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Genesis 1, 14-19 
Two things are of great interest about this fourth day. First, there are those who teach that these are not literal days, but that they actually span thousands and thousands of years. However, plant life cannot live without sunlight. Right. This is a fixed law on planet Earth. Uh, the plant life was made on the third day. The sun was made on the fourth day. If these days encompassed great lengths of time, all plant life would have died before the sun ever showed up. Right. <laughs> so, stop being ridiculous. It's six literal days. God is smarter than unbelieving scientists. God made these things, made things so you would not have any question or argument about his power. Second, when you look up at night and behold the stars, you cannot even tell their number. You could not tell the distance between them. Yet the Bible says he made the stars also. This is a footnote, a PS, if you will, dropped into the text to show that God's power is so awesome that no effort was exerted by him to create the starry host. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, with which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Genesis 1, 20-23 Evolution is an absolute, out-and-out, -out, diabolical lie from hell. That's right. God created the animal life as you find it. Not one missing link ever has been or ever will be found. The links are not missing, for there are no links. Right. There are no links. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Genesis 1, 24-26 These verses are God's record of his creation. God made man. He formed and fashioned man out of the dust of the ground. Thus, you are a created being, and God is your God. Whether you deny him or not, he is still your God. Now, whether you will own him as your God and receive from him everlasting eternal life, or whether you will reject his lordship and authority and enter into a lake of fire and spend eternity in death rather than life, does not alter the facts. Right. The truth of the matter is an unalterable, unchangeable fact. You are one of God's created beings, and you would do well to believe him. You would do well to prepare to meet thy God. Amos 4.12 You may be saying, how can I meet him? Knowing that you could not get to him, God saw fit to come to you. Amen. He took upon himself the form of a man, coming to this earth in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. You could not do anything about your sin except be punished for it. But God, hey, that's good, but God, because he loved you so much, took your sin upon himself. He bore your sin in his body on the tree. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross, he died to pay for your sin. And then, because he is God and has the power of an endless life, three days and three nights later, he rose from the dead. He has done all that he could do in order for you to be saved. Won't you trust him and be born again today? So won't you, friend? What are you waiting for? Just trust Jesus Christ and be saved. Amen.
All right, well, that is the end of another lesson from a Sure Foundation book on God's creation. And Lord willing, next time we will be studying and covering God's order. Amen. So hope you'll come back with me next time, uh, perhaps next week or next time I get on. We will cover that topic. Amen. And again, you can find this book and many others by Brother James on the church website at www.jameswnox.org. And you are more than welcome to go back and listen to all these messages I've covered so far. Uh, you can either go back and look through the Facebook uh, uh, videos or you can find them on my YouTube page at Ambassador for Christ. Uh, type in my name, Scott Messenger, and look it up that way and watch them either here on Facebook or on YouTube because I upload them onto YouTube also. All right, well, till next time, may the Lord richly bless you and you all have a great and wonderful rest of your day. Amen. Remember, Jesus saves. Believe on him. Bye-bye for now.